Father, we thank you for this night, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, uh, for tonight's word, Lord, tonight's study of your word. Help us, Lord, in this night <clears throat> just to grow in you, to learn in you, get wisdom from you, get revelation from you. I pray, I pray in this night, Lord, as we're getting closer to finishing the book of Genesis, that we just drew that much closer to you, that we got to know you that much more, Lord, because the more we get to know you, Lord, the more intimate we can become with you, the more we'll have fellowship with you, Lord, the more we understand your character, who you are, we'll learn your voice better, Father. We got to learn the voice of your word, Father, if we are to know your voice, Father, truly, Lord. We don't want any voice, Lord, that does not match with the voice of your word, Father God. So help us to understand and learn, Lord, Father, who you are, that we would fall more in love with you as we get to know you, Jesus that we could apply and learn from all these stories of the Bible. Every story that's here, Lord, it was left there for a reason, for us to learn from it, for those things to be an example to us, Father, of the, the things we shouldn't follow and the things we should follow, Lord. Help us in this night. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. And let us be listeners and also doers of your word in this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So anybody know, let's see how much people paying attention to somebody other than Joshua, Christina, and Freddie. <laughs> what chapter are we in in Genesis? Dang. I don't know what. Genesis 39, 19. <laughs> Amen. Alma, on the money, it was ready. Amen. So we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. Um, you guys might get, obviously, you guys got a little preview from uh, a little bit about the story of Joseph if you were at church on Sunday. But we're going to get into depth uh, a little bit deeper um, with the story of Joseph. Uh, I say, like I said, told you guys before, the story of Joseph is a, it's a really good story because we're learning how to deal with betrayal. Uh, how to deal with family coming against us, how, how to deal with God speaking to us, prophesying to us, and the opposite <laughs> ends up happening to you. And then, like, for those who were there on Sunday, you you believing in God's word that he speaks, but then the opposite things start to happen. Joseph is the best story to encourage us when we're being discouraged, um, when the the opposite starts to happen. Amen. Where we were believing the Lord for something, but life is throwing other things our way. So we're going to pick up where we left off, uh, where Joseph was being accused by Potiphar's wife um, of, of him, you know, raping her. He didn't do it. Uh, he gets thrown into prison. So let's pick up there. It says Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph, threw him into prison where the king's prisoners were held, and there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. The Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in prison. Look how crazy this is. No matter what circumstance that Joseph found himself in, God made sure he came out on top. He got betrayed by his brothers, he comes out on top. Becomes a slave, comes out on top. Gets accused of rape, gets thrown in prison, comes out on top. See, guys, this is an encouragement for us that no matter what attacks, no matter what testings we're put through, as God's children, when the Lord is with us and our coming and our going, we always come out on top. The Bible said God calls us to be the head, not the the tail. Amen. We are the head. We are not the tail. We are not the bottom of the barrel. Amen. We are not the bottom of the barrel. There's a lot of Christians who feel like they are the bottom of the barrel. You are not the bottom of the barrel. You are God's masterpiece. You are precious to the Lord. And if you walk with the Lord, you will come out on top. No matter what circumstance comes your way, no matter what slander on your name comes your way, no matter what accusation, no matter what false judgments are placed on you, you will come out on top. Amen. You will come out on top. 
Think about this. You get thrown into prison and the favor of God is in you where now you're in charge of what's going on in the prisons. How how much that would, you know, piss off the devil, get the devil mad that he's like, I got you in prison and then you end up becoming like a warden in the prison. It's like, dang, I didn't get what I wanted from you being in there. Imagine that everything that the devil intends for bad on you, God uses it for the good. Amen. So if you're going through it right now, if the devil's been attacking you, maybe you're going through some unjust things, unjust judgments, unfair things going on, you are going to come out on top. When you walk with Jesus, you're obedient and you stay faithful. You come out on top. Amen. So if the devil threatens to put you in bad circumstances, to put you in prisons in your life, you got to tell the devil, devil, you're going to get me thrown into a prison. I'm going to be the warden. <laughs> Amen. I, if, if you're going to throw me in prison, I'm going to come out being the warden. How, imagine that. People falsely accuse you. You get thrown into a, into a jail cell just to find out you become like a warden in there. Amen. So as much as the devil thinks he won, as much as the devil thinks he's getting an edge on you, like I said before in one of the Bible study, as much as the devil looks like he may have an upper hand, he can't have an upper hand when you're in his hands. Amen. And it says here, before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all other prisoners and everything that happened in prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Amen. It, this goes for us. This is not just for Joseph. When you walk with the Lord, he causes everything attacks you being attacked, being, you know, these horrible trials and tests you go through tribulations, these afflictions. That's why the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers you from them all. Sometimes we're always asking God to prevent bad things from happening. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good Christians. We can't avoid bad things happening. But what we can do is when bad things are happen to us, that we come out victorious. We come out on top. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Bible were thrown into the furnace, God did not stop them from being thrown in the furnace. He stopped the fire from burning them in the furnace. Amen. I, I, I've said this before. God will not stop the snake from biting you, but he will stop the venom from poisoning you. How many could say amen? I don't know if y'all just that went over your head. See, some of you, you've been bit by a snake. How many have been bit by a snake? Not physically, but in your life, you've been bit by a snake. Somebody bit you. Somebody hurt you. Someone tried to do damage to you. Someone tried to harm you. Someone falsely accused you. Someone spread a lie about you and, and you were bit. It hurt you. And you're like, man, I just got bit. God, why did you allow them to bite me? Why did you allow them to hurt me? I was doing right. I did good things. Why did I get bit? See, but God does not stop the bite from happening, but he will stop the venom from spreading in you. Amen. Because if you think about it, a snake biting you is really not the problem. The problem is if a venomous snake bites you and the venom spreading through your blood, that's the real problem. Amen. Because if you get bit by a snake, yeah, you'll get, you'll get, you'll bleed. Maybe it'll hurt a little bit, but the real life and death situation is if a venomous snake bites you and the venom spreads. But the good thing is, it can't spread through your blood when the blood of Jesus runs through your veins. How many can say amen? See, venom can't spread if the blood of Jesus, which is a healing blood, is a deliverer blood that runs through your veins. The venom cannot spread. Think about this. If you're covered by the blood of Jesus, you're filled with the blood of Jesus, you're filled with the spirit of Jesus, the venom cannot spread. So that's why the Bible says no weapons will prosper. It says that they'll be formed. That means they'll bite you. That means they'll hit you. That means they'll do certain things, but they will not prosper. They smack Jesus. They hurt Jesus. They pull the hair out of his beard, but, and they even in their mind killed Jesus, but to really realize you didn't kill him. He's an everlasting God. Amen. So whatever you're going through, whatever bites, don't be so mad or upset with the Lord. Why are they, 
God, why did they get away with this? They didn't get away with anything because the venom will not spread. Amen? Genesis chapter 40. So now he's in prison. He's about to interpret two dreams. Verse 1. Sometime later, uh, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended the royal master. Pharaoh became angry with his two officials. He put both of them in prison. Where Joseph was in the place of the captain of the guard, they remained in prison for quite some time. And the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, who looked uh, after them. While they were in prison, um, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night. Each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? He asked them. They replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. Go ahead and tell me your dream. So real quick, uh, interpreting dreams is a gift from God. Amen? Some people think it's witchcraft, and in and, and some cases it can become witchcraft if it's the source is not a Christ-centered biblical source. You don't want to get interpretation of dreams from just anybody. See, the thing is, in those days, nobody had the Holy Spirit living in them. It wasn't like how it is now. We have the grace of God. We have the Holy Spirit. It's so important that if you have dreams, and I know a lot of you guys on here, you guys get dreams, to ask the Holy Spirit for interpretation of dreams. It is a gift that you can have. Amen? You just have to ask the Holy Spirit. Don't try to figure out your own dreams. Amen? It is not your job to try to figure out a dream. All you have to do is ask God. The Bible says in the book of James, we don't have because we do not ask. Sometimes we wake up from dreams and we're like, what did that mean? And we assume, amen. How many have been there where you wake up and you just automatically assume this was from God or maybe this was the devil or maybe you might just assume it means nothing. If you are a dreamer, I want to encourage you, pray about your dreams. I don't care if they were seemed evil. I don't care if they seemed good. Pray about all of them. Amen? Because sometimes a dream that you may think is from the devil may be God allowing the devil to expose himself so you can pray against it. Maybe because, see, these, these, these two men, one of them had a bad dream. See, and one, and one would have said, that dream was from the devil. So what, Joseph was interpreting demonic dreams? No, it was a message from God. I've known people because they get a bad dream, they say, I rebuke it. You, you may, it may be God showing you something bad, not so you, I rebuke it because it came from the devil. You need to rebuke it because in the sense of, I need to do warfare so this doesn't come to pass, not because the dream itself came from the devil. Because sometimes because we get a bad dream, we automatically label it evil. How do you know it's evil? And some of you are wondering, how do I know? Get to know the word of God. The best way to interpret spiritual things, the word of God, is always go to the word of God. And um, I wasn't going to go into this too much, but I feel like I should because I feel like there's a lot of you on here. You get a lot of dreams and you have a hard time um, interpreting dreams. You may have a hard time understanding your dreams. I'm a big dreamer. I dream a lot. When I tell you I get a lot of prophetic dreams, I get a lot of demonic dreams sometimes. Um, you guys want me to go in this? If not, I'll continue with Genesis. I, I'm going to take a majority vote. You guys want me to go into dreams or do you want me to continue on in Genesis? I'll, I'll give you guys like about a minute. I'm flowing no matter what. I'm asking you guys to be specific what you want me to do. You want me to stay on dreams or you want me to keep going on Genesis? Amen. We'll stick on dreams then, which was what I was feeling from the spirit. So we're going to go into dreams. The reason why this is important, we're going to talk about dreams because it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Go with the Holy Spirit. I <laughs> We go, we won't, yeah, we gonna do that no matter what. <laughs> um, the reason why this is important with dreams, 
It is a gift from God. Amen. If you're on here tonight and you say, I don't get any dreams, ask God for dreams. Dreams are messages from God. Nightmares are messages from the devil. Dreams that are all over the place is your mind being overworked. I'm going to go to that again. Dreams are messages from God. Nightmares are messages from Satan. Dreams that are all over the place are is your mind being overwhelmed, your own thoughts, your own subconscious thinking of a million things that your brain can't even rest at night. And I think it's important when you when we're going to talk about dreams, and I, I think it's perfect that I'm on this because Joseph dreamed and interpreted dreams. So you notice he didn't just dream dreams. He, he dreamed and interpret had the ability to interpret the dream. Amen. I don't really necessarily encourage Christians to go around trying to interpret other people's dreams. You need to encourage other Christians to ask God for their own interpretation of their dream. The only reason why Joseph was going around interpreting dreams was because they did not have a close relationship with God. People did not have the Holy Spirit. So a lot of these things were not established. So he was the go-to person. I, I will encourage you as a Christian. Yes, if someone doesn't know, you can help them. But don't, I, I would not encourage you to be a go-to person for dreams. You need to encourage people. Yeah, or my wife just put, or Googling them. Do not do that. Do not become a go-to person with dreams. You need to tell people to go to the one who gave you the dream. You understand what I'm saying? Because this is the danger of people grabbing scriptures out of context. Well, I dream dreams and I interpret dreams. And you start trying to hear people's dreams and start trying to interpret them and going out of your way to become this go-to person for dreams. You will become a medium and you will become borderline a, a witch or a witch doctor or a warlock. Amen. You will start to fall into divination and witchcraft and not necessarily because you're evil, not necessarily because that's what you were trying to do. But because unintentionally you crossed unhealthy lines, you understand what I'm saying? So as with dreams, there are messages from God. I want to give you an example, and my, and my family can um, testify of this. Um, many years ago, maybe 11, 11, 12, 11, 12 years ago, uh, I was I used to work at Home Depot, and I used to go to work like at two in the morning. And uh, I would go with my mom. I'd go to work because I was working at Home Depot. She dropped me off. And I had a dream one night before I went to work. I shared it with them, uh, my mom, in the morning. I had a dream one night that I was laying in bed and that my sister, because me and my sister were living with my mom at that time, that my sister got up, came to my room, woke me up and said, Jamie, Jamie, get up. There's a guy in the house. He broke into the house and he he's tried to, you know, rape me. And I got up in my dream and in my dream, I had a pair of brass knuckles sitting on top of my TV and I grabbed it in my dream. I came out of my room and I saw a guy running out of the apartment in my dream and I chased him. And I remember in my dream, God spoke to me and said, don't chase him. I chased him anyways. And I hit him and I knocked him out. I got on top of him and I hit him so many times that I ended up killing him in the dream. And I just remember in the dream while he was dead on the floor, I looked at my my mom and my sisters and they looked at me like, your life is ruined forever. And I woke up and I shared the dream with my mom. And I told my mom the dream and they, my sister Angie just put, I remember. And my mom said, we don't, we rebuked that. Hopefully, you know, that's not going to happen. Three days later, three days later, I just happened to have called off from work, which that day I just didn't feel like going to work. Exactly. Angie just put, it did happen. Three days later, honey at two and two, three and two, two something in the morning bangs on my door. Jamie, get up, get up. I get up. I'm wearing the same clothes that I was wearing in my dream. 
Connie comes in the same way that it was in my dream and says, there's a guy in my room who's touching me and, and, and came in here to try to rape me. I said, what? I get up. This is real life now. Three days later, this is real life. I get up. The brass knuckles are sitting on top of my TV, just like it was in the dream. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, do not grab them. I didn't grab it. I go outside the door and I see a man running out of the apartment, just like in my dream three days prior. I start to run to chase him. And when I got to the door, I heard the Lord say, don't go. And I literally, I cannot explain it to you. It is like a hand went bah, against my chest and stopped me from running out and chasing the guy. And God told me, I already showed you what happens if you go out there and chase that guy. And I, and, and I left it alone. So God gave me a message. See, because it was a bad dream, was it from the devil? No, it wasn't. It was a warning from God of what could have potentially destroyed my life, right? Because if I would have chased him and killed him, I would be put in prison forever. So God was preserving my life and preserving the life of that guy as well. That was a message from God. Was it a good dream? No, it was not. But it didn't mean that it came from the devil. It was a message from God. Now, you might say, but you just said a nightmare is from the devil. So now I'm going to explain a nightmare. If demons touch you, if demons sleep with you, if you're having dreams of women seducing you and you're you're, you're having sexual dreams where you have no control over your own body. Has anyone ever had a dream like that where you have no control over your body and a horrible, sinful experience is going on with your body that you have no ability to stop? Those start to become demonic dreams. And usually when it's a dream that's sexual that you don't have control over, that means you don't have control over something sexual in your real life. I don't think you guys just heard what I understood what I just said. When you do not have control, why is it important to have control in your dreams? Because the Holy Spirit, one of the fruits of the Spirit is to have self-control. When you don't have self-control, what does that mean? Something else has control over you. What does it mean when something else has control over you? That means you need to be delivered from something that is controlling you. You see how important we realize, I, I've asked Christians, you need deliverance? No, I don't need deliverance. I'm fine. No, you might need deliverance. You need, and I, I think I'm going to stay on this topic probably the rest of the rest of this Bible study. I think because this is a very, this is a very deep um, topic and study, and I don't think the church um, teaches people enough about this. I think a lot of pastors brush off dreams because sometimes either the pastor dreams nothing or he doesn't take the members' dreams serious. Dreams are to be taken serious, especially when they happen frequently. Uh, and I understand that feeling because when I was growing up you know, in the Lord and I was a baby in the Lord, I would have a lot of dreams and I didn't know what to do with those dreams. I didn't know how to cultivate those dreams. I didn't know how to develop um, this gift that God was giving me. And I'm here to tell you, just because you get a lot of demonic dreams does not mean you don't have a gift. See, because I, I, I came up with this saying, contaminated vessel means contaminated gift. When the devil the, will try to contaminate you, so your gift gets contaminated. And if your gift is contaminated and you try to operate in your gift, what happens? You will spread contamination to others. That's why I encourage people, get your life together before you start to prophesy, share dreams with people. If there is a lot of confusion and cloudiness in your dreams, clean that up before you speak a single word, because that means there is some form of contamination in your gift that God is trying to teach you to clean up so you will have a clean gift. 
And nobody wants a dirty gift. Amen. Nobody wants a used gift. Who here likes used gifts? Right. Imagine someone's like, I bought you this and it's all dirty and just disgusting. Who would want to receive that? That's why some people on here, you have a gift and you're like, well, how come I'm not being able to be used in my gift or people don't receive my gift because your gift is dirty and you don't need to be spiritual to know when something is dirty. Amen. Do you need discernment to know when something's dirty? No, it's a it's a it's a human ability for you us to notice what's clean and what's dirty. So when you have a pure gift, a clean gift. It makes it easier for the body of Christ and other leaders to receive this gift, right? So you need to be, you need to get this clean. You need to get the cloudy confusion gone. Amen. You need to deal with this. See, the devil will attack you in the very area God wants to use you. That's why when I would get dreams in the beginning, I got a lot of demonic dreams. I got a lot of very all over the place confusing dreams because the devil figured if I can get Jamie to disregard his dreams, if I can discourage him in the area of dreams, God, he will not pay attention when God tries to use him prophetically through his dreams. But like they say, don't throw away the baby with the dirty bath water. You got to reject the bad and retain the good. So interpreting dreams like Joseph, why was he able to interpret dreams? Why, how was he able to understand his dreams? He lived a clean life. He walked in close fellowship with God. Never get close to God to understand dreams. Get close to God because you love God. If you get close to God for the sake of your dreams, you are you using God as a form of gain and benefit and God will see right through your motive. That is why you're not getting clarity in your dreams. Cause God's like, you're only drawing near to me for an interpretation or to be used in your gift. And God is not going to have that. God is a jealous God. God's he's wise. <laughs> he's going to see why we're trying to grow, draw close. So what's the best thing? Instead of focusing on the dream itself, focus on the one who gave you the dream. And if you focus on the one who gave you the dream, he'll give you the interpretation of your dreams. So the closer fellowship you get with God, the more the dreams will clear up. You understand what I'm saying? How do you get the demonic dreams to stop? How do you get the confusing ones to get cleared up? Clear up your own self. Clean up your mind. Renew your mind daily. Think about this. Your brain is like a filter. If you need to clean that filter out consistently, if not, guess what happens? That filter gets clogged up with a bunch of junk. And then when you go to sleep, you're going to sleep with all this junk on your mind. So what happens when you go? Come on, man. What happens when you go to sleep? All of that junk is soaking in your mind. So when you go to sleep, your dreams are all over the place. Because you're not letting your brain filter out the junk. Amen. You're not letting you're not. How do you how do you clear out the filter of your mind? Renew your mind. Wash your mind with the word of God. If you're getting a lot of demonic uh, dreams or dreams in general, pray before you go to sleep. Not a quick little, thank you, Jesus, for my day. Forgive me of my sins. Amen. Go to sleep. Spend some time in prayer before you go to bed. Read the word of God. The Bible says the word of God will wash you. Read his word before you go to sleep. So when you go to sleep, your filter's clean. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to sleep and the filter's clean. There's no junk sitting there because when the junk is sitting there because the filter hasn't been changed out, you're going to sleep. Now you're having a crazy junk dream with all kinds of garbage going on in your dreams. Now you can't hear, you can't see what God is trying to show you because there's too much junk going around. How much, how many can say, man, how many of this is, it's targeting this for you. See, so, what the heck? Sound like somebody was knocking on the door. So with dreams, this is so important. So you may have a message from God, or you may have a message from the devil. So when you're going to be a dreamer, you need to ask the Lord for discerning of spirits. 
This sermon is super important. Why? Because this sermon, the Bible speci specifies what this sermon is to discern spirits. Amen. What does it mean to discern spirits, to separate spirits, to determine which is a spirit, the spirit of God? What is the spirit of Satan or one of his demons? You need to have the ability to discern spirits. Discernment is not suspicion. I know people who say, I have discernment. No, you, you are a very suspicious person. <laughs> Uh, you, you're just kind of qu constantly questioning things. You more have suspicions. You don't really necessarily have discernment. I know Christians who say, I got discernment. Uh, you, <laughs> that's what I was just about to say. Re you're good at reading body language. That, a person comes to church with their head down. I discerned you're not doing well, brother. No, you saw me with my head down. <laughs> you're just really good at reading body language. Amen? You... Um, is that the same like testing the spirits? When you have discernment, it should cause you to test the spirits, which I'll get I'll get to that in a little. So when you have discernment, you listen, the gift of the spirit is not something that is self-induced. I know people who try to force themselves to discern something. When you have the spirit of God, you the 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 best way to do things is Lord reveal something to me. If He doesn't reveal it to you, don't demand answers. I know people who demand to hear the voice of God or demand God to give them answers, like He's a genie. If God doesn't tell you or doesn't show you, leave it alone. Pray and that's it. But if you get discouraged and mad and upset because you didn't hear God's voice and He didn't show you something, now you're becoming an entitled person and you're viewing God as he's this genie who has to answer to you. We answer to God. God doesn't answer to us. You understand what I'm saying? We are just a, a vessel of God. We're just an instrument of God. God is not your instrument. <laughs> Some people with their gift, they get upset and frustrated with their gift because they try to view God as an instrument. He's not your instrument. You're his instrument. And if he decides to use you as his instrument, be grateful. And if he doesn't use you as your in instrument, it's not your time. Or maybe, like I said, you're a little dirty and that instrument needs to be cleaned up before he uses you. Amen. So you need to just chill out. <laughs> Amen. I never demanded God to make my gift work. Amen. Because some people would get frustrated. I think I have this gift and it's not working in this. And then you get mad. You cannot be demanding God to make your gift work. If he gave you a gift, the best way to operate in your gift is walk in a holy, righteous life. Let him dictate when and how he uses you. Amen. The spirit of God dictates how you use the gifts he gives you. It's not for you to dictate it. I gave my life to the Lord in 2008. And I had discernment already. I had a lot of gifts already. But it wasn't until a couple years ago that I really operated it in the gifts at a whole nother level. Because some people want gifts without the ministry that actually needs those gifts. Some people want gifts just to have the gift. God will give you the gift when you have the task or an assignment that requires that gift. If God has not given you the task or the assignment for something, he's not going to give that to you yet. You understand what I'm saying? If God has not told you to fix that car, he's not going to give you a drill and give you all the tools you need. Some people get mad. I don't have the tools for this. I don't have this gift yet. You don't have the assignment yet to even use the gifts on. <laughs> Some people want the gifts just to have the gift and say, I have it. Right? See, I didn't get mad at God. When I didn't interpret, I didn't understand my dreams. I didn't get frustrated. With, I know some people when they're gifts, they don't know how to use it frustrated. They get frustrated. I'm a, I need to take a class. I need to read a book. I'll go to another church and it'll, it'll frustrate them. So now your gift becomes idolatry. 
and witchcraft. It's not about your gift. <laughs> the focus can't be your dreams. Listen, you need to walk your life like this. Lord, speak to me through dreams. Give me the discernment to discern dreams. God, if there's anything in me that is hindering me from understanding your dreams, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me. Show me where I'm coming up wrong. And as I go, you will give me understanding. You will give me the wisdom and he'll give it to you. If he doesn't, you keep on with your mission. You can't. Oh, it's not working. I don't understand my dream. And it, it took me a while to fine tune my gift. Amen. Because it's like an instrument. If anyone here has ever tried to learn an instrument, you're not going to learn that that quick. I've been playing instruments almost my whole life. And I'm still fine tuning it. I'm I just don't I don't consider myself that good. I'm still fine tuning it. So that's something that you you keep going because you're human. Amen. Freddy said people like that end up wanting impartations. Yeah, there's people who want impartation. How can you have it? You, you want an impartation without understanding the cost that it comes with? Jesus said nobody gets into war, gets into things without counting the cost first. So back to it, back to the dreams thing. So when God wants to use you in dreams, the devil will want to use you in your dreams as well. You understand that? Because the devil tries to corrupt where God is working in. So if God wants you in purity, the devil wants you in perversion, right? If God wants to use you in a certain area, let's say music, the devil will have messed you up in the area of music. So why? Because if he can dirty something up, you're going to refuse to use it. Or maybe you'll feel too much shame and condemnation to, or you'll feel not good enough for God to use you in an area due to the past that you have in that area being dirty. You understand? Sometimes we're like, oh man, I don't, ah, I'm not, I don't think God's going to give me a prophetic word or a prophetic dream or this because I get a lot of perverted dreams. I get a lot of bad dreams, this and that. Well, goes to show why the devil don't attack an area unless he's threatened by it. You understand? You heard, God heard what I said? The devil will not attack an area unless he's threatened by it. If he attacks your dreams, it's because he's threatened by your dreams. And if you're on here tonight, you say, well, I don't get dreams. How do you not know that he's blocking your dreams? Maybe it's not like, oh, I don't get dreams. Maybe the devil's blocking them. Maybe it's he's not even maybe he's so threatened by your dreams that he don't even give you bad dreams. He just makes sure you don't get them at all. So it's so important to ask God to give you dreams. I've had, like I said, many instances where God's given me dreams and later they came to pass. And how did I under, how did I know when they were from him? God will never give you a dream that goes against his word. I know a lot of people who say, the Lord told me this, the Lord showed me this. You need to get into the word of God. So if you get a dream and you're not sure, go to the word. Think about your dream. What did I dream? Okay, what happened in my dream? Okay, a, a woman showed up in my dream and I slept with her. Red flag. It wasn't God. God does not tempt nobody. God is not going to put perversion in your dream. God doesn't do that. So right there, I know this dream is not from the Lord. They didn't instill fear in me. Oh, I had a dream and I'm, I woke up and I'm fearful. Such and such person's going to die. Oh my gosh, I had a dream that I died. And now you have fear now. Oh, but it seemed so real and the detail was so detailed. So what? <laughs> the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear. So if you get a dream that causes fear, red flag, it didn't come from God. Because, see, you can have a bad dream that God is giving you a warning, but it may put the fear of God in you. And that's fine. But putting fear of death, 
putting fear of loss, fear and anxiety, not from God. They didn't come from God. It's a red flag. See, the, the God's not going to give you a dream with fear. Fear of the him, yes, but fear of anything else, no. Because the word of God says, God has not given me a spirit of fear. See, so when I had that dream with the guy breaking in, I saw it, but I didn't have fear. What if it's something that happens to someone else? Not so much fear or anything. That's a very vague question. What, what do you mean? You went to something happening to someone else. It depends. You, okay, so if you see something bad happening to someone, ask yourself, okay, it doesn't cause any feelings for you. That's a very good thing to do is go through the process of saying, how did this make me feel? What did I feel when I was in this dream? Did I have fear? I had anxiety. I got depressed. I woke up depressed. I woke up overwhelmed. If you feel any of those things, demonic. If it was something that was bad going on, but it didn't impact you like well, like as you're saying, didn't cause any of those negative feelings, then you may be on to something. It may be a warning for someone. So what do you do? Now you pray. God never gives you a dream to go around telling people. See, Joseph messed up. He went around and he told his brothers. Most dreamers that I know, they talk too much. They go around telling everyone their dreams. That is a, a sign of a person who has a mismanagement of their of their gift. That is a person who is being ignorant with their gift. I don't go around sharing my dreams unless God has given me the green light. Well, brother, how do Pastor Jamie, how do I know that I'm God gave me the green light to share it? Did you pray about it first? Did you intercede? Intercession and prayer is different. Prayer is when you just pray one time. Intercession is when you're constantly bringing something up to God. How do you know you got the green light? God gave you peace about doing so. If you're thinking, oh, man, I don't know how this person is going to receive it. Dang, I think they're going to reject it. I'm this and that. And you, you, your emotions are in the way of you hearing God's voice. A lot of the times why people um, have a hard time hearing God's voice because their feelings and their emotions are too loud. Sometimes our emotions and feelings sound like God and they're not God. The Bible says that the heart is the most deceitful of all things. Isn't that crazy? Your own heart will trick you. Oh, I got to say this to this person because I care about them and I want them to blah, blah, blah. You might have had good intentions, but if the spirit of God it didn't come from God, it won't go anywhere. How do you know you should share it to somebody? Ask yourself this. Is their heart good soil in order to receive this seed of a word I'm trying to put into them? So if you know they're not good soil, you really need a word from God instead of you coming up with the idea of should I share this dream with them? Wait till God tells you share this dream with them, because this is this is very important. How do you know you should share your dream with somebody that you may be dreaming of? Did you want to share this dream or did he tell you to share this dream? Because some of us, because it was a powerful dream or a very whatever kind of dream, regard, you're like, I, I got to share this with this person. That right there is a red flag about yourself. That means you don't have self-control. You should be able to see the dream, hear the dream, pray about the dream, and not feel this anxiousness to have to share this dream with this person or with someone. Because God's not going to do, do that so you can go around telling people. It's for you. See, that's what happened with Joseph. He got excited. He got this dream. He got this vision. And he went around sharing it with everyone and stuff. Even sharing it with your spouse. It depends. 
it very it very it very that's another like I said it's a very another vague question. It depends how spiritual is your spouse, what kind of condition your spouse is in, how spiritual is your spouse is your is your spouse messed messed up, and they're in their mind maybe they can't hear that kind of dream and might mess them up. It depends. It would depend on your spouse, the spiritual maturity of your spouse. Guys, just because someone's your spouse doesn't mean you share every single spiritual experience with them. Right? You be Job. Who who was the one speaking negative to Job? His own wife. So I'm not trying to cause enmity or uh, you know an enemy with your your spouse, but you need to know your spouse well enough to know will this be of any benefit sharing it with my spouse is my spouse spiritual enough is my sp my spouse mature is my sp has my spouse recently been in the word and prayer that if i share it cuz you got to ask yourself why are you sharing it with your spouse for what just to talk about it you know what i mean or just for them to hear it because then you can borderline end up just gossiping about a dream if you're going to share it how did if I'm gonna share this with a spouse or a family member or somebody, how is this gonna benefit the dreams? Is this person gonna be of see? So for with me and my wife, I share things with my spouse because I know my I know my wife, Pastor Crystal, is in prayer. She reads her word, she gets dreams from God. And I know she's in a place that if I share it with, she can bring some insight. Because if they're not in a good place spiritually, they may bring their insight and not godly insight and because see, the thing is, if they're not where they should be, you share a dream that came from God and they may discourage your dream. They may distract you about that dream. They may even tell you disregard that dream and you may listen to them because they're your spouse. So it's important to find out in what condition is that person in to even be sharing it with. I don't care who they are. You, If you're getting a dream from God... It came from God. It didn't come from your spouse. It didn't come from mommy and daddy. It came from God. So you need to protect it. If your, sp your spouse is spiritual and they're in a good place spiritually and you know I'm sharing this because I know this person is of ben might be of benefit to this thing who can bring clarity and godly wisdom, by all means, share it with them. If they're not there and they're not going to bring insight and they're not where they should be spiritually, then don't. And that doesn't just go for a spouse. That goes for anyone. I don't care if they're a Christian. Guys, because there's a lot of Christians who don't have discernment. There's a lot of Christians who the devil will use. Maybe they're not in a good place spiritually. I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they're not a Christian. Maybe they're not where they should be. And you shared it with them, and they may mess you up. I know there's some people out here, maybe you got a dream or a vision or maybe uh, maybe a, a goal of yours that you wanted to have and you shared it with them. And then you're done with this conversation. You're like, man, I don't even know why I shared it with this person. You're upset. You're discouraged. You're confused. Has anyone ever been there before? Amen. Because they don't they don't they're not spiritual. So they're not going to understand spiritual things. So it's so important that if you get a dream from the Lord that you protect it, that you guard it, amen, that you keep it pure. If you are not sure, that's already a sign, don't talk about it. Don't share it. Because the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. If your dream comes with confusion, either two things are going on here. Either the dream's not from God, because God's not the author of confusion, or... The, the devil's trying to sow confusion. So what do you do? You rebuke the spirit of confusion. And if the dream cl is cl clarified after, then you know it was an attack on the dream. If it didn't get cleared up after going into warfare and rebuking the spirit of confusion, then the dream was confusion in total. Then the dream came from the enemy. And a lot of dreams are symbolic when you get dreams from God, a lot of things are symbolic. I'll tell you this, about 90% of the time, I'll tell you, of my own dreams personally, they're never, That's this is another thing, and I like that Joshua asked about when you dream about a person, it may not even be about the person. 
And that's why you need discernment. I've had dreams with people, specific people, and it had nothing to do with that person. That person was symbolic about somebody else. Uh, Justin said, I've had several dreams recently of my past relatives visiting me and research that it's a very bad sign. So when you dream of dead people or dead people talking to you or visiting you, it's a very dangerous line because when a person passes away, if the dream is not drawing you closer to God, then you can fall into, there's a word for it. It starts with an N. I, I think it's called necromancy. You, you may fall into conversa conversating or communicating with the dead. And the Bible condemns communicating with the dead. So you don't want to have dreams with dead relatives when you, because Guys, I'm a, I, I love that we're talking about dreams and I love that you guys are a asking questions because it, 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 this is going to bring a lot of clarity to a lot of you guys. When you start dreaming with dead people consistently and they're trying to communicate and talk to you, you may be dealing with what is called a familiar spirit. Demons, and we, we know this because what I'm telling you is in the Bible. So there's a story in the Bible where King Saul, God, that's why I said, the, the Lord just said this to me right now. The condition of your dreams reveals the condition of your walk with God. Right now, I just heard the Holy Spirit just tell me right now, Jamie, tell them the condition of their dreams reveals their condition of their walk with me. If their walk with me is good, their dreams will be clear. If their walk with me is cloudy, their dreams will be cloudy. I literally just heard the voice of God clearly just interrupt my thoughts. And he says, tell them it's this simple. The condition of their dream is a mirror of their condition with me. If their condition with me is good, their condition of their dreams will be good. If their walk and their vision with me is clear, their dreams would be clear. If their vision and their walk with me is cloudy, then their dreams would be are going to be cloudy. Wow, that's powerful. So, Jamie, but they're clouding all over the place. Then get your relationship with him cleaned up. Amen? So you don't want to be dreaming with dead relatives. So, so back to what I was saying. King Saul, see, God interrupted me, man. <laughs> um, King Saul, he had rebelled against God. Bad relationship, bad conditions with God. What happened? He couldn't hear from God no more. So what did he do? He went to a medium and said, God won't talk to me. Can you make the prophet Samuel, who was pretty much King Saul's like mentor, who had died? So the prophet Samuel, you guys can read about this in First and Second Kings. The prophet Samuel was the guy who mentored King Saul. He had already died. And so he so King Saul, God wouldn't talk to him no more. Because he couldn't hear the voice of God. Usually when people can't hear the voice of God, it's because there's some kind of rebellion in their life. King Saul could not hear the voice of God because he had rebelled. And he was trying to find shortcuts. I've noticed this. People, when they can't hear the voice of God, instead of figuring out where they're going wrong, they try to find shortcuts to hear the voice of God. Saul tried to find a shortcut. Oh, let me go to this person. Let me go to this medium to make... Samuel come back. See, people, when they don't really want to get right with God, they find shortcuts and mediums and try to go to other people, jump to another church, find a different prophet, find someone else prophetic to hear to hear what they want to hear. See, King Saul didn't really want to get right. He just wanted to hear what he wanted to hear and get what he wanted to get. And there's going to be a lot of people like that. That's why it's so important that you protect your gift because some people are only going to use you for your gift. Only some people are going to, going to get close to you because they want some kind of benefit and gain and you need to protect your gift. Guys, I have a prophetic gift, but I have to protect it. I can't let people come to me just because of a gift. They will drain you. I'm telling you, they'll drain you. They'll use you and abuse you. You need to protect it. Amen. And then also with your gift, you don't want to get God mad that God sees you, that you're using your gift to be a medium to people. Always point them back to God. 
You and your gift, I'm sorry, are not that important. You need to put it back to God. So while this was happening, he goes to this witch and tells him, God won't talk to me. Can you make the prophet Samuel come back? Prophet Samuel is already dead. And the Bible says that she says, I see a, I see an old man coming back. I see an old man. And, and he goes, wow, it's Sam. And she saw Samuel. She conjured up, quote unquote, the prophet Samuel. Um, so this, so this was, this was happening and what is this name? We, guys focus on the, the message. I, I, I appreciate that Freddie, but I, I don't want no one to start focusing on the definition and lose focus on this. Um, so this, while this was going on, so they, it, it appeared to be, um, Samuel, right? There, so some people will say, well, if God is condemning speaking to the dead, how come they made the dead come back? It Because it wasn't Samuel. It, it, it looked like Samuel, talk like Samuel, because the spirit came and said, what do you what do you what do you want, Saul? And Saul goes, God won't talk to me. So I figured to talk. Maybe you could help me. And the spirit says, well, if God won't talk to you, what makes you think I'll talk? So why would a spirit? who's already dead, go in contrary to what God has already has already said and put in, you know, and secured. He's not going to deal with Saul no more. This so-called spirit of Samuel goes and tells Saul, he goes, today you will be with me, meaning you'll be dead and be where I'm at. But if you understand, this is how you know it was a demon and not really Samuel. Is this Samuel was a man of God and was a prophet of God. So when he died, who do you think who did Samuel go and be with? What do you guys think? When Samuel, the prophet Samuel died, where did he go? Who was he with? He went to go be with God. <laughs> he went to go be with the Lord. He went to go be with Jesus. Amen. He went to go be with the Lord. King Saul, because when he heard, this is why I said it's so important when these dreams and these people come to speak, what happened when this so-called spirit of Samuel told him, today you'll be with me. He goes to you and your kid, your your. Your people will be with me where I'm at. What did it do to Samuel? It put fear in him. He goes out to battle. And what does he do? He gets him. He kills himself. And his armor bearer and them, they kill themselves. Where do you think they went? Where do you guys think they went? Where do you guys think they went? Ding, ding, ding. And went to hell. <laughs> you don't get to kill yourself, die in rebellion, and go to be with the Lord. Because why would God not talk to Saul, but then use Samuel to talk to Saul, tell Saul you're going to die and be with me, and he kills himself and goes to be with the Lord. You see how how much contradiction that could cause, how much confusion that it, it, the whole message it was in fear. What caused all of this to be even come up? Witchcraft was used through this medium. You see, understanding it wasn't a pure. Was there a gift there? Yes. Was it a clean gift? No. I know people who say, but I dreamt this and I saw this and it was accurate. I don't care. You can go to a palm reader and they're accurate. You can go and read your horoscope and it's accurate. You can go. I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying. You can go to a witch and they'll tell you some truths about you. See, the devil is not a complete liar. The devil uses truths and twists them with an ulterior motive. When the devil came to, to try to trick Jesus, did he lie to him? 
What do you all think? When the devil went and Jesus was being tempted in the desert and he had to deal with the devil, was the devil lying to Jesus? Was he saying lies and saying things that were not true to him? Yes, ex exactly what Freddy, my brother Freddie said. He was twisting the word. He was twisting it. There's people who, just like in, in churches and false religions, they'll use scripture and twist it. And they and how do you know they're twisting scripture when it doesn't produce the fruit that the Bible says it should? How do you know someone's twisting scripture when it doesn't match up with the rest of the Bible? How do you know when someone's twisting scripture when it's not producing the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit that the Bible talks about? How do you know someone's twisting scriptures and coming up with false doctrine because the word of God is like a puzzle. If you grab one verse and you twist it, it will not match with the rest of the puzzle of the Bible. All the pieces should fit together. If they don't fit with the rest of the word of God, it's it's false doctrine. It's false. That's why there's a lot of people, they're in Christian churches, a Catholic church, a Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, and they think they're hearing the truth because someone is using some parts of the Bible not realizing that that one thing that person is saying, they twisted it to mean something completely different. Think about this. If somebody went through your text messages and grabbed one part of your message, could they not make a complete different meaning with your message? They need to read it in context. Read the whole message. Read the whole message. <laughs> it's like if I send you a message and put, you're so dumb, LOL. And you just take out the part where I said you're so dumb and take out the LOL. You're going to say this guy insulted me, not realizing it was a joke. You just took out the LOL part. Right? And that's what the devil does. Ooh, you, you saw? Just say this part. Leave out the LOL. That's what some pastors do. They'll preach the word and leave out the other parts. <laughs> They'll leave out parts. That's why I don't read the NIV Bible. The NIV removes parts. Be very careful what translation of the Bible you're reading. It leaves out parts. The NIV removed a bunch of verses. Be very careful. If you want to know what Bible you... I, I, this is me, but pray about it. Read New King James, New Living Translation, English Standard Version, Amplified. They do not remove verses. Do not read the NIV. I don't recommend reading the King James Version, not because it's missing parts, but because the grammar um, is is contradictory because of the, of the type of English that was spoken. Certain words, the grammar is, is not right, right? And you know, you can write New King James is good. New King James, NLT, New Living Translation, uh, ESV, Amplified, these are good translations. Do not read NIV. Do not read the Passion Bible. A, a lot a lot of these things. Uh NASB is, is pretty good as well. But the top three that I, I recommend, NLT, New King James Version, and Amplified are the three I, I recommend. And how do you know which ones to read? Compare them. <laughs> Pull out Matthew 24 and then pull it up in four different translations and you can compare and you'll see how someone removed words, removed verses. Some even removed 20, 30 percent of what was written in there. You got to compare and test the spirits. The spirit will tell you. Spirit will tell you things. It's so important to to do these things. So, you know, so I, I don't even know how I ended up with the translations thing, but. So it goes back to this with the dreams. So the devil will try to twist this thing. So to make you think it's from God and it's not really from God and it ends up really being from the devil. So you may be hearing this, oh man, I'm so overwhelmed now and I'm worried if the devil's twisting my dreams. No, get so close to God, he, ha he has no ability to twist anything with you. It's just that simple. Oh, Jamie, what, what do I do to, so the, the devil's not messing up my dreams and twisting them and messing with them. Don't get in bed with him. Think about this. Where, where do you dream? In your bed. I don't think y'all just understood what I just said. Where do you get dreams? 
when you're sleeping, when you're vulnerable, when you're in bed, when your mind is, everything is quiet. Think about this. You get dreams when no one's talking, no one's distracting you, no one's messing with you. You want to know when you've really gotten close to God, when you elevate from dreams and get to visions. You get dreams. You want to know why you get more dreams than visions? Because that's the only time you're actually going to listen to God. That's some, the only reason why some people only get dreams and no visions. Because that's the only time you're not distracted. That's the only time you're actually going to listen to God. So the difference between dreams and visions. Dreams happen when you're sleeping. And visions happen when you're awake. How do I know I'm getting a vision? Uh, first, normally how this happens for me, it may not be the case for everybody. Visions tend to happen. They're, like I said, they're not self-induced. The spirit takes over and he shows you something. And when he shows it to you, it may be a couple seconds, whatever it is. As soon as you, you, you understand. I, I've noticed that visions are actually, he gives you an instant meaning versus dreams sometimes dreams for some reason um it takes a little bit more to cultivate it's very hard in the middle of a vision for the devil to actually mess with you i've noticed this i realized so when i came to christ i had more dreams because I, I believed i was you know still immature in the lord so i he only could only really mess with talk to me in and dreams until i i learned to clear up my life that i I purposely tried to hear from God while I was awake and I started to get more visions than dreams. And the de the devil has a harder time getting in in the area of vision. He it's easier for him to get in the area of dreams. Uh déjà vus um it's it, it's really hard to really say exactly what they are because the Bible does not talk about déjà vus. I've had a lot of deja vus before where I'm like, dang, I've been here before or I saw this before. But I've noticed one thing about deja vus, all the deja vus I've ever had, I've never gotten a meaning from them at all. And all the other prophetic people I've ever met, they've had deja vus, but they, it never resulted in anything. They never got the meaning of it, never understood what it meant or what they got from it. Um, I just, it never did anything for me. So I would, I personally, I disregard them because as much as I've tried to pray for them and never, it's, you know, pray about it for yourself, but it never resulted in anything. Days of it was like something like having a mirage, like in the desert. <sighs> uh, I, I would probably say I'm going to lean more towards. Unless we're confusing the definition of vision and deja vu, deja vu is normally like, you feel like you're somewhere again or you're, you know, something's being repeated. I, I more disregard those because deja vu sometimes are rooted in people saying you're, it's reincarnation. Like you lived it in a, because that's the feeling that you get from a deja vu. It's like you, you lived that in a past life and you're reliving it again to see if you're going to make the same mistake. And I believe that's the enemy trying to, Ooh, the Lord just, just, just clarified this for me. Nightmares, oh man, the Lord just spoke to me. Nightmares are, is the opposite of dreams from God. Deja vus are, oh, roko shit, Eric. Deja vus are the opposite of the vision realm. Because when does deja vus happen? When you're awake. So think about it. Dreams is God's way of talking. In your, when you're sleeping, nightmares are the way of the devil's talking to you when you're sleeping. Visions is how God talks to you when you're to show you something when you're awake. Deja vu is the way. They de so God just brought me clarity with that right now. Deja vus. So that right now, just based off what I heard, just heard from the Lord. Deja vu is the devil's way to counterattack your visions. So I, I would disregard them.
just based off what I just heard from the Holy Spirit, disregard it. And trust me, I've gotten, a, so it's not like I don't understand. I've had a lot of deja vus where I'm like, that. I, I've been here before. I even had deja vus where I felt like I knew what the next move was going to be. And I was like, in my deja vu, last time this happened to this person. But you know what's crazy? It never happens anyways. So, so uh, I would say that they, based off what the Lord just put in my spirit right now, as I'm saying this, deja vu is the counterattack to visions. Freddie said visions are or more di or more direct, and dreams are left to interpretation. Um. So, visions and my personal experience are very straightforward. Dreams, um. I will say God leaves them more in the area of interpretation. Sometimes dreams need to be revealed and they're symbolic. I've noticed when I get visions, it's not, it's normally not symbolic. It's very clear because I realize visions don't, you're not in a vision for an hour or two hours. You're sleeping for hours. So think about this. When you're sleeping for hours, your brain is working nonstop. The devil is trying to get in your dreams. But when you go into a vision while you're awake, it, when you've had them, you'll understand what I'm saying. When you go into a vision, it's so focused. And because it's not self-induced and God did it, boom. Like, you, you, it, it's very hard for the devil to penetrate it. So, Justin said, exactly what I mean. Deja vu doesn't really exist. Like, when you have a mirage, it's not real. Exactly. Deja vus are illusions. They're illusions. And who's the master of illusions? The devil. The devil is the master of illusions. He creates mirages. It's a false reality. I've never had a deja vu come to pass. Never. Not once has any of my deja vus ever come to pass. It feels like it is. It feels so weird. But I would say deja vus for... Uh, even the name itself sounds demonic. It's it's demonic. I feel like that's based off what I just heard from the Holy Spirit. It's the counterattack to visions. Mm -hmm. uh, Joshua Christina, someone, sometimes I can tell when something is a vision and I saw it in my mind or if I just imagine it. How do you know? Imaginations are self-induced. Um, I, I noticed this. Um, Freddie said it sounds like witchcraft. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna hundred percent say deja vu falls into witchcraft because there's people who do not have the Holy Spirit and get deja vus, and I would say hundred percent deja vu is witchcraft. So I, I and it doesn't mean that you're operating in witchcraft. It just means that a spirit of divination is trying to work its way into your gift. Remember what I said: the area God wants to use you in. The devil wants to use you in there as well. If he can use you where God wants to use you, he makes you ineffective in that area. Right? So if that's why a lot of talented music people, for example, Beyonce, she grew up in church. She was in the church choir. She had a talent in there. What did the devil do? Use her skill and her talent and brought it to the world. And now she uses it for the devil. So she can't use her gift. For God. Why does the devil attack you in your dreams? So you can't be used in your dreams for God. And you use it for the devil. Same thing. Like. Th think about this. The, the lady who Saul went to and saw Samuel. She saw him in a vision. So. You see what I'm saying? It was demonic. So. Your imagination is self-induced. I imagine myself buying a house and having this and doing that. Normally, your imagi your imagination is tied to your desires. Visions are tied to God's desires. So they, no, no, most of the time, I know people say, I just saw something. And it's usually tied to something they want to see. So... <clears throat> The thought or vision would come out of nowhere, so I'm not trying, not sure what exactly is self-induced. So if it came out of nowhere, it go, so 
So let's say, let me see. I'm trying to think as an example. I, I'm just, you know, hanging out, and one day I just boom, I think about somebody getting killed. That could be my subconscious thinking about it. I could have been watching a movie about it. So when I get a, vi I'm gonna make it this simple. How do you know when it's a vision from God? I'll tell you this much. When I started getting visions from God, I knew without a doubt in my mind it was from God because I never had nothing like it before. When I've had things like it before that meant nothing, then I knew it wasn't God. That's the best way I can explain it to you. When you get a vision from God, you don't have nothing like it. Think about this. If there is nothing like God, then the things of him, nothing will be like it. So most of the people, it's usually your own imagination, your own subconscious, or even a fiery dart of the enemy. The Bible says that the, the devil throws fiery darts. That means you're just at work thinking and a fiery dart comes, whoop, boom, and goes in to penetrate your mind. That's why the Bible says wear the helmet of salvation. When you're wearing the helmet of salvation, fiery dart, boom, bounces off because you're wearing the armor of God. So a, a lot of you guys are asking a lot of questions and it's wear the armor of God. If you're wearing the armor of God, all this stuff doesn't penetrate. So you need to be constantly wearing the armor of God. So you need, you need to do that. So when I thought, I'm telling you, it, 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 we probably thinking a little too deep into this vision thing. I'm going to tell you like this. When you get a vision from God without a thousand, without a doubt, I'm a thousand percent sure you will know. Well, how do I know? You will know. If Jesus or an angel shows up into your room, how do you not know you're not seeing an illusion? Trust me, you will know. Think about this. Every person who had a vision or an encounter, an angel showed up, did any of them ask themselves, is this really real? They knew. Why? Because they never saw nothing like that before. God, nothing can come in the way of God like God. It won't, it won't, it won't, it won't happen. It won't happen. How do you know you're getting the vision? That's what I said. If you're getting a lot of messed up dreams and your dreams are not clear, I always say focus on the area of dreams before you try to get into the realm of visions. Learn self-controlling your dreams, and then you'll be you'll I would say vision is the next level above dreams. If the dreams are still distorted, focus on clearing up yourselves and the area of dreams. So visions can then because I would say if you if you try to if you can't if you can't take care of the dream area, you're not more than likely not gonna be able to handle the vision area. Is this blessing you guys? I know there's a, some of you guys that are completely silent in the chat. I just see the same names on here. I want to make sure that it's, it's blessing everybody on here and everyone's learning and it's not just the dreamers <laughs> receiving on here. Amen. You guys want me to keep talking about this? Because this, this this is guys, this is super important. There's some of you mind here you might think, oh, this is not important. Oh my god, what a weird Christian is talking about dreams. Um, so um we're gonna we're gonna no no, no we'll, we'll focus on this dreams. So it's important on the on the on the dreams. So the dreams are 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 super important, are super important. And I, I, Leslie said on here, she hasn't put too much thought in dreams. It's so important, too, because it's an area where God talks to you. So the God will talk to you um, many ways. God could talk to you. The main way God needs to talk to you is the Bible. Dreams should never supersede the Bible. Visions should never supersede the Bible. I'll even go as far as to say this. If you don't have a solid foundation on the word, don't even think about dreams and visions. The word, the Bible says the word 
is a sword and it separates flesh from soul and spirit separating jo uh, bones and from joint and it's, it's the separator so the word of god will separate a deja vu from a vision a dream from a nightmare a, a, a message from god from the devil of god a message from the devil if you do not have a good foundation of his word and you're not studying his word you're not making his word supreme Forget about dreams, visions, and all that stuff. Folk it because then you don't have no separator. I think that's so empowered what I just what I just said. If you do not have an obsession with I know people who have obsession with dreams, visions, and gifts and not his word. They literally don't have a, a foundation of the word of God. So what happens if you don't have the separator? How can you separate what's from God and what's not? If, oh, but I discernment. Well, how do you know your discernment is discernment and not suspicions if you don't know the word? You need to know the word of God well. For example, I like that Justin brought up the relative thing. Some could say, well, I discerned that it was a, it was really is my relative giving me a warning. But if you knew the word, you would know the story of Samuel and Saul and you know about familiar spirits. See, so the word will separate immediately what's from God and what's not. I don't even need to worry about discernment. Some of you are relying on your discernment instead of the word of God when you know very well you don't even have a good foundation of God's word. I'm going to go as far as this. How many here have read the Bible from beginning to end? How many people here have read the Bible from beginning to end? I'm going to wait like 30 seconds. When I say who's read the Bible from beginning, not to say that you've done it, you actually really read the Bible from beginning to end. You actually know the Bible from beginning to end. Then you need uh, nobody. I'm pretty sure nobody, nobody <laughs> said they did, and it's not to make anybody feel bad. That goes to show you, focus on the word. Focus on the word. Uh, can so, uh, can everybody make sure they're muted? Somebody keeps on muting themselves. So you need to focus on the word. Why you need to focus on the word? You need to understand God's voice through his writings before you're trying to learn his voice in your head, in your subconscious, in your spirit. How do you know his voice in your spirit, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul when you don't even know it from the one he left behind so clearly. But you're trying to hear this voice inside of you that's all distorted when the one that's clear, you don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Why are we trying to hear this voice in our head when you won't, that we don't understand when you won't read the voice that he left clear for you to understand? I've met more I've met more people um obsessed with gifts than the word the that becomes idolatry So I'll tell you this much I started operating in gifts more when I became more obsessed with the word of God You understand because God says so I, I'm going to put this example to you Whoever knows me personally for a long time, you you know what I like, what I don't like. The little smallest deeds my wife on here would know, Freddie on here would know, my family on here would know. 
Michelino's known me a long time would know. You'd be like, nah, Jamie wouldn't do that. Jamie wouldn't say that. lemon pepper wings. So, for example, I love that she brought that up because I was trying to think of an example. So, Michelina, if someone said, I just picked up Jamie's order of his favorite wings and you asked, what wings did he tell you to pick up? And you said, yeah, he told me to pick up, uh, I don't know, chicken teriyaki wings or barbecue wings. <laughs> Michelina said, lies. How do you know I don't like that? How do you know that I didn't order that? Because she, they've known me enough to say he never orders that. I've learned his pattern. <laughs> For any point, you don't like clubs, loud places. I don't like being around a bunch of people. So if someone said, I saw Jamie eating barbecue wings a with a bunch of his friends, you're going to say he has no friends. He doesn't, he doesn't hang around a lot of people and he doesn't eat barbecue wings. How do you know? Oh, at Buffalo Wild Wings. I never eat at Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, but he eats wings, but he only eats from Wingstop. <laughs> he doesn't like Buffalo. How would you know that? You've spent enough time with me. You've picked the patterns up. You've known based off what I have made clear already. You don't need to test the spirits. I've, it's what I've already made clear. You don't need to test what's been made clear. It's like someone saying, I need to test the word of God. For what? It's clear. There's nothing to test. <laughs> See, this is this is where the culture of people trying to bypass simplicity. The word of God is there. I don't need to test spirits if the word of God is clear. It's like if the Bible says, Jamie, give your tithes and offerings. Hmm, I need to test the spirits on this one. <laughs> I don't need to test it. It was clear. It was flat out. Jamie asked for lemon pepper. You don't need to test the spirits on that one. You don't need to. Because I've made it clear before. See, so how do you know what's been made clear? The Bible has made it clear. You understand? Testing spirits is things that come in a twisted way with an ulterior motive. That's where you need to test spirits. That's when you need to test the spirit. Because something could be appear to be clear, but the motive behind it. So what do, what do you mean? Jamie likes lemon pepper wings. That's clear. But his ex-girlfriend dropped off those lemon pepper wings. Well, why would his ex leave lemon pepper wings? She doesn't want nothing to do with him. That She must have poisoned those lemon pepper wings. Now you're trying to test the spirits. You see what I'm saying? That that's what's going to cause you to test the spirits is the motives behind things. Not the, the clarity of it. And the that, that's clear. That's that's why the Bible's there. You need the word of God because that's what brings clarity. Some of you are like, I need clarity of my dreams and prophecies or my gift. The only thing that can clear clear that up is the word. Not me praying for you. Not you going to a conference and a famous preacher laying hands on you and bringing clarity. Listen, no no preacher or pastor can lay hands on you and bring clarity when you don't read your word. God's not going to bypass bypass things. You understand what I'm saying? It's like if someone says, I want the Pastor Jamie to lay hands on me and bring clarity for me. And God knows very well you're not going to read your Bible. You think God's going to give you what you're asking for if you're going to keep bypassing the word of God? No, that's why some of you, are, you, you don't get clarity on your gift because you keep trying to bypass. The, the, they're trying to bypass the struggle. You're trying to bypass the trials and tribulations. You're trying to bypass your character getting molded. You're trying to bypass you reading your word and learning the word of God. There was years, guys, that I went not understanding what I was reading in the word of God. I didn't stop. I kept reading it anyways. Just like Freddie just put on there. It's the manual of instruction. This is, I love that he said that. Good job, Freddie. 
The manual of instruction. Imagine God's like, here's the manual to figure out everything spiritual. And you're like, hmm, the manual that God left written and clear. Let me put this to the side and God, let me see if I can hear your voice. Let me test the spirits. God's like, yo, that's why I gave you this. That's why I gave you this. Learn this first. Learn this first. Read the manual first. And then you can wing it. How many How many can say amen to that? When you've built something and you've learned something enough, then you reach the maturity point. I was like, it's not that I don't need the manual. The manual is already inside of me. So the manual that's inside of me that I've learned will help me to get this done. Pastor Crystal said, stop wanting the gifts from someone you won't even spend time with or love. He is the gift. Oof. So true. Because that's the thing is we want a gift and <laughs> not realizing the one who gives gifts. So you got to get to this level. So back to the Joseph story. Why was he able to interpret gifts? He was so close to God. It was easy for him. When you're not that close to God, yes, you have a gift. There's no denying it. But you're you, like I, I told you, as the Holy Spirit told me, the clarity of your dreams and visions and your gifts is a mirror of the clarity and the closeness to your actual intimacy and in time with God. If you're not that intimate and close to God, then your dreams and your visions will continue being this distorted. Oh, but I pray and I do read my Bible, but you're not intimate. You understand what I'm saying? There's people who spend time with God, but don't spend intimacy with the Lord. What does that mean? Those who've been married or in a relationship, when you go out, when you go out, you can go and spend time with your your wife or your husband, and it's not, and it wasn't intimate. It didn't mean anything. You could have been three, two or three hours at a restaurant and watch the movie and go back home, and it was not intimate. Versus, you could be at home ten minutes, and it was a meaningful, intimate, close bond you had with your your spouse. You, you guys understand what I'm saying? And some people are like that with God. Yeah, you might have read your word, you might have prayed, and you might have sang a song at home, but there was it, it was no intimacy with God. It didn't, it didn't really you didn't walk away really learning anything. How do you know you're being intimate with God? When you read the word and you walk away and you learn something, He spoke to you, He showed you something. You have a a desire to keep reading. When you read the Bible and you're and you're quick to want to be done with reading the chapter already just to say you read the Bible, that meant zero. It meant nothing. There was no intimacy. Yes, like Freddie, it's a trans. You're, you're viewing God as transactional. I got what I wanted. I'm out. It's like, and there's some people who are like that intimately. I got what I wanted. I'm out. So it's people like that with the Lord. Oh, I, I just want to get close to you so I can get clarity on my gift and my dream and my this and that. And then you're out. And then God's not that God, you ain't gonna get you're not gonna get nowhere like that spiritually. You need to get so close to God. Like I said, so intimate, so close, you get to know him so well that when there's a time to find out if something's from him, you know because of your closeness to him. Your closeness to him will determine the closeness of the accuracy of your dreams. Just like a warlock and a witch is accurate because they're close to the one who gave it to them, which is the devil. Think about it. Why are they so accurate? Because they're so close. <laughs> Think about it. If you ever meet these palm readers, mediums, they're very dedicated and disciplined to their witchcraft. I know so many Santeros and people that are into that. They are very dedicated there's a lot of people that say they're they were into witchcraft and they say they were santeros. They, they, you were you were the bottom of the barrel in that. I've met some dedicated. I'm talking dedicated. They have all the items at work. They don't care if they get fired. They have the bowls with water under the chairs at work. They leave work to go to the beach, clean themselves on their lunch break, and do the ritual at the beach and do all that stuff. Those are. <laughs> 
those are the ones. And and if you notice, the closer they are and the more disciplined they are, you see them operate the most accurately in the demonic. Why? Because the devil is a carbon copy. He knows the system. So he 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 perverts the system for his benefit. Because he understands that that's how it works in the kingdom. You guys understand? See, the, the devil, he's a mimicker. He knows, hey, look, this is how it works spiritually. He knows. He knows. He was in heaven. He he dealt with God. He dealt with Thou that. He knows how it functions. So he copies it. So what's the best thing you could do with your dreams? Get so close to God. Walk so pure with the Lord. Be intimate with God, not in a transactional way. Stop it going, getting close to God to expect to hear his voice. Stop getting close to God to expect to get a vision right after. Stop getting close to God to expect to get interpretation of your gifts right after. Those are people who are miserable Christians and have no identity. And they, they because they put their trust and their faith and their accuracy or their ability to operate in their gift. I'm here to tell you, guys, I could care less if I ever operate in my gift again. As long as I'm close to God and I love God and he's pleased with me, I could care less if I ever get a dream, a vision, a prophecy, anything ever again. To me, that's just the cherry on top. It is not the source of my relationship with God. It should never be the source of your relationship with God. It should never be the source of your identity. I know people who that messes up their identity. I don't know my dreams. I don't know my vision. I don't know why God's not using me in this or that in ministry. I don't know why I haven't been used at church for this. And your whole source of your, you think you're good with God is rooted in ministry, rooted in a job, a position, your physical fitness, all this stuff, like all this garbage that the devil gets us wrapped up in it needs to be just god i love you i want to be with you i want to get to know you that's it's that simple i i love you i want to spend time with you i want to get to know you better i want to surrender more of myself to you if you're like that with jesus god man guys i'm telling you how god is going to use you how God is going to bless you and watch how God is going to reveal things to you. Why? Because you have a pure heart. You have a pure mind. If your mind is not pure, your heart is not pure. Why is he going to put more dreams and visions if you're not pure? That's why the Bible says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. You need holiness. And some will say, but I'm not doing nothing bad. How do you talk? Do you gossip a lot? Do you complain? Do you, 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 you slander people? Do you think negatively about your life, your situation, yourself? Do you get upset when you don't get your way? There's just so many things. So the best thing you could do when it comes to the area of dreams, live holy, clean yourself. Like I said, contaminated vessel, contaminated gift. But if you're a clean vessel, your gift will be clean. How could your gift be dirty or contaminated if you're clean? Your dreams are contaminated because you're dirtying yourself in some area of your life. Think about this. That's the only way. And in this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep with this with the dream. There's people who have perverted dreams, and I feel that of the spirit of God. There's, a, there's some of you on here, and I don't say this to shame you or for you to be embarrassed, because it happens. It's happened to me before. Where you have perverted dreams that control you. You don't have no control in your dreams. That is, the devil has a hold of you in that area of your life. Some of you get dreams where you're being tormented. That means the enemy has a hold on you, some area of your life. You got to get those areas cleaned up. You dream with your ex a lot. Your ex shows up in your dream. Now, that doesn't always mean that the enemy has a hold on your life. And maybe the devil's banging on the door to find a way in. If you wake up and it makes you feel some type of way towards your ex, maybe just a weird feeling, if it has an impact on you and they, they do things to you in your dreams, 
out of your control, you need to get set free. There may be a soul tie there. There may be, maybe an ex is doing witchcraft on you and has a hold on you. And I know somebody right now, as I just said that, you just said in your mind, dang, that's happening to me right now. That's those, those, those things happen. You'll be surprised who's doing witchcraft on you. You will be very surprised who's doing witchcraft on you. I dated a girl many years ago. It wasn't even a serious relationship. And I met this girl's mom. Come to find out the mom was doing witchcraft on me for me to stay with, the, with her daughter. I broke up with the daughter right after. I said, your witchcraft don't work. <laughs> there, you'd be surprised. A nice, sweet person posts his scripture, says they love Jesus, loves God. Is post. I don't care how much you talk God. There's so many people who talk God. I'm a Christian. I love God. And they have a scripture in their bio. But you're a witch. <laughs> you're a witch. You're into witchcraft. You got a demon. Some of you on here, you even own jewelry and things from your ex still that you refuse to get rid of. I guarantee you that's because that witchcraft has a hold on you. I don't own anything from an ex. I don't. And some, of you, some of you just might have said, well, it's because it's expensive and it's worth money. So you'll let a demon have a hold on you. Because it costs money. I could care less. Which is told that you to speak to Michael himself. Mm -hmm. Perfect example to refute what someone is saying. That if a witch says she speaks to the archangel Michael. Tell her, how did you get Michael to disobey the command? Because Michael is assigned to watch over Israel. You're not... Israel, you're not in Israel, you don't live in Israel, and you are not Israel in, entirely. So how did you get Michael to disobey God's assignment to go and talk to you? Perfect example. Do I need to test the spirits? No, I, 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 cle I divide it, I separate it, I clear it with the word of God. You see how easy that was? Well, Pastor Jane, how do I know if they were really talking to Michael? Because the Bible tells you what Michael does. The archangel Michael does. You see how easy that was? You see how easy that was? With the word of God. The Bible says that the archangel Michael is dedicated to watch over and protect Israel. Why do you think Israel is, is surrounded by Islamic nations and no one has been able to overtake Israel? Because... Not only because of the Lord, but Mike, the archangel Michael is there. <laughs> I mean, have you, God ever thought about that? Israel is the size of New Jersey. And the whole, all those nations around it are outnumber them, outpower them, outnumber everything in every aspect. How come no one has been able to overthrow and overtake Israel? Okay. The Lord assigned the Archangel Michael. But you'll have, as my brother, brother Justin is saying, someone's saying that the, these witches are talking to Michael. Like if Michael's going to say, I'm going to stop watching over Israel and I'm going to forget what God said and I'm going to go over here and talk to this witch because she has something very important to say to me. Got him. I didn't need to test the spirits. I didn't need to ask God. I had the word of God to tell me. Oof, that's so, I love what Pastor Crystal just put. The Bible is a double-edged sword, not our dreams or visions. And not even our discernment is a double-edged sword. The word of God is a double-edged. Ooh, that is a really good point. The Bible is our double-edged sword. Use your sword. Stop using your imagination. Stop using your own thoughts. Stop using that as a sword. That is a gift, not a sword. Dang. 
props to wifey, yo. <laughs> your your gift is a gift, not a sword. Use your sword. Use the word. The word of God is a sword. Anybody got any other questions regarding dreams and visions? This has been good. This has been good. I'm glad we stayed on this because the the Lord was telling me to kind of stay on this topic for 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 tonight. Because we're going to be done with Genesis. We got like nine more chapters and we're done. And when we're done with this, we're going to enter into a, a study on the origin of Satan, the true origin of Satan. Um um the the origin of angels, how they operate, what they do. And I'm glad that Michael was already brought up. So any of you that are asking Michael to come and defend you, he's not going to abandon what got the assignment God has gave to come look out for you. Maybe another angel will come out and take care of you. But I know people who say, I ordered the archangel Michael to come over here and deal with my boss. He's not coming. <laughs> You, he, he's not coming. Uh, Brother Freddie said, vision and trance, the same thing in the Bible. It depends because some people, well, the definition of trance and vision is the same. I just think it's just terminology, not necessarily that they're anything really different. Because some people say, I entered a trance. And when you ask them, what is what does that mean to you? Well, I saw something like a, a screen popped up in front of my eyes and I saw this thing and I just zoned out and went into this. A vision does the same thing. So I think I would say the proper term, just so no one confuses what you're saying, you say a vision. But some people out of might use the word trans, but it's pretty much like uh like the same thing. So any other any other questions with about dreams and visions? Amen, amen. So we'll cut it here. Let me stop this recording.